Hi, I'm Jamie Wood and this is Psychological Foundations Project 3. Um, I will be taking some information from our text in Chapter 10 to compare and contrast. Um, and that information will be um, these two theories of motivation. We will be talking um, about the attribution theory and the expectancy theory. Um, attribution, starting with the attribution theory, um, we, this is a theory that seeks to understand people's explanations for their success and failure. Um, a lot is based upon these explanations of where that success or failure occurs. Um, an essential assumption is that people will attempt to maintain a positive self-image. Um, and that is done in a way that if something good happens, um, people usually attribute that to their own abilities, um, whereas if a um, negative event occurs, um, that is usually factored to something outside of the person's control. Um, and so the expectancy theory, on the other hand, is based on a belief that people's efforts to achieve on their um, to achieve depend on their um, expectations of a reward. So what can they get out of that? Um, and Atkinson um, added that an important aspect to this theory is pointing out that under certain circumstances, an overly high probability of excess can actually be detrimental to motivation. And so, um, a little further, a, mo a person's motivation increases as the task difficulty increases um, up to a point at which the person decides that it's very unlikely to succeed um, or the goal isn't worth their effort. So it's not something they really want. Um, so they're not going to get anything out of it, go back to that um, expectation of reward. Um, and so what we kind of learn from Atkinson is that harder tasks um, are better for motivation and, you know, to increase that motivation. Um, and that success must be within reach, um, not all easy, re not an easy reach, um, but reach for all students. So kind of like reaching an A or a B um, should be attainable for students, but it shouldn't be easy. They shouldn't just be handed out. Um, so if we look over here at the similarities and differences um, for these two theories, we see that um, both are theories of motivation that aim to improve and increase productivity. So you're motivated in a positive way. Um, and they're both ways of motivating that encompass the idea of positive self-image or reward versus being uh, motivated by something negative um, or a negative factor. Um, and the differences, we can just kind of see where they have just a lot of different meat in them. Um, your attribution theory, um, one of the central concepts is called locus of control. And that is a personality trait that determines whether people attribute responsibility for their own mm. success or failure um, in an internal or ex or two internal or external factors. Um, and the internal locus of control is definitely my type of um, realm. Is someone that believes success or failure is the result of his or own his or her own efforts or abilities. So they kind of shoulder those um, responsibilities for the success or the failure. Um, and we often see an internal um, locus of control personality that um, better grades and higher test scores, but they off they also um, shoulder things that they may not have any control over. Um, and an external locus of control personality is, um, believes that the other factors, other factors such as luck, task difficulty, um, or other people's actions are actually what cause the success or, for failure. Success or failure. Sorry. And so um, we often see um, procrastination um, or even just avoidance of a task because it's difficult altogether, because they believe it's out of their control so they're not even going to try. Um, I often envy these people because <laughs> they kind of um, rest on if it happens, it happens. Um, but yes, and so other than those factors in the attribution theory, we look at the expectancy theory, um, which uses a formula known as the expectancy balance model. Um, it's multiplication here. So you've got motivation equals the perceived probability of success um, times the incentive value of that success. And so what this, te this theory is implying or teaching um, is that people's motivation to achieve something depends on the product of their estimation of the chance of success or reward. So they're gonna, their motivation level depends on um, what they think they're going to get out of it. And so kind of like that expectation of reward. And so to wrap it all up, I love what our book says. Um, it kind of boils it all down to motivation is um, what gets us going what keeps us going and determines where we're trying to go. And so as teachers, we know, um, even just from these two theories, um, that all students are motivated, whether it be by um, uh, maintaining a positive self-image or getting you know, that expected reward, um, there's motivation. And these are just two of the many, many ideas of motivation out there. Um, and we must use those tools as teachers to um, help our students reach their success and reach their potential.